The mechanics of this character are massive. Everything about this project is a question mark. This year, the mechanical geniuses at Legacy Effects have to mechanize two characters. Not just giant creature, but small alien, his cockpit guy. There are really two major facets to the mechanical build for this character. There's the heavy stuff, the mechanical skeleton that needs to support everything, and most of that is going to be man-powered. The other facet of mechanics is the animatronics. The animatronics are the servo-actuated mechanical functions that bring a lot of character to the, to the creature. Eye movement, nostril flare, jaw open and shut, and the moves of the fingers. So Alan Scott has divvied up the jobs between a few guys. First step, we usually work on jaw. And we split the jaw to get the front of the jaw moving fast by giving it a sub-jaw, so it's a little cheat. We move just the tip of the jaw when he's speaking, because he needs to speak. <laughs> And after that, the sculptors will, will let us know what size eyeball they're, they're sculpting around. So then we can start making eye mechanisms. They always give the heads to Khan because he's so good at it, but uh, I want to build one if I can. I'd love to build that little alien at the top. He's going to have head up, down, side to side jaw, upper, lower lip to get kind of that like sock puppet talking. Jim said that it was my Sistine Chapel and that I'm taking forever, but I feel like I went pretty fast. <laughs> How do we power the hand? It's like, we don't know that that's going to work yet, but we did a test for a finger and we realized that's not going to work. So we got to redesign the finger, redesign a mechanism, see if we can even do it. I'll have about a week to do this, so there's zero margin for error. It all works theoretically in the computer, but to make it the most efficient possible, so I'm going to make all the parts all at once, and then it's all going to come together real fast at the end. We have these super lightweight shells, and we put these servos in the joints here, and these servos even though they look small, they have 475 ounces of torque, which is more than enough, and they're very, very fast. In my history of hand making, this is definitely the largest hand I've ever made. Time is the one thing you cannot buy, and that's the one thing I wish, we, I always wish, whether it's this or a movie or a commercial, I always wish I had more time. In this shop, doing the heavy welding and working on the heavy mechanical structure, we have Peter Weir Clark, Jim Kundig, and Brian Nemanny. I've never done anything this big that is manually operated. Before, anything like this I've done is hydraulics or pneumatics. You know, really the hardest part is figuring out how to get this huge thing to move in a way that is not going to kill the puppeteers, as well as having the character have fluidity and have kind of living movement, as opposed to looking like there's somebody inside going, Aah! Uh, you know, bench pressing it. It's all about weight distribution and everything. So it's how much steel and stuff we have to put in there to make it safe. So it wasn't a doubt that we couldn't do it, it was just how much and how big. The neck mech is a couple different parallelograms that are sort of working in concert to give the head a kind of a smooth and relatively lifelike movement while still being able to have kind of good leverage for the puppeteer in terms of moving what's going to be a huge head around. I've done a million projects, and you always say to yourself, I don't know how we're going to get this done, we're never going to get this done, and somehow on the last day it's all sitting there and it all works, and you just can't believe it. And that's just everybody working together and making it happen. task of building that head last Monday, Monday. Last Monday. So. and uh, pretty much done by Friday. Yeah. So we had it done in about five days. Not bad. <laughs> starts to move, that's when the magic happens. That's when you get people rubbing their eyes and pinching themselves. It's the movement 
and that's what the mechanics are responsible for. It was surreal because everything almost moved in slow motion. You just get to look around the crowd and it smiles and people taking pictures and commenting and, and it was, uh, it was, um, you know, wish Stan was there. I mean, it was, it was remarkable. Check out the Wired channel, thescene.com, for the entire Giant Creature series.